today I want to just want to get the rest of the suspension and the steering out. So all the suspension's obviously out. So I'm just working on the idler arm up there. I'm going to pull that out. Um, and I'm going to try and... Most of this stuff's getting chucked out. I've got to figure out how to get the pitman arm off. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that either. And there's a steering box in there that's got to come out and get reconditioned as well. Uh, and then just around on this side, I'm just going to get up inside here and where the suspension normally lives and that's your wire brush all out and just give it a little bit of a, a rust conversion now I'm not going to get too crazy with it all um, but yeah just get it all treated up and looking okay so at the moment we're just tidying up all these parts and just getting kind of prepped and ready now so let's take the upper control arms to a mechanic a guy called Scott over at Ultimate Automotive and he used a hammer chisel to actually hammer out the um, the bushes with the chisel, an air chisel, and um, and so that's really good. So then I can I can press the rest on by myself now. I don't need um, any more help with that. I'm not sure what else I'm going to need. I guess I do. Um, and then I'm just sort of polishing up these fuel lock brakes. Interesting kind of situation actually with that one. You can see what's going on there. Well, it's pretty standard. This other one over here that I'm tidying up at the moment. So the battery ran out on my drill has just been completely scuffed off and I just have no idea, it looks like the wheels have been hitting it or something and just taken the top off, um, really weird so there's a bit more work to do on that part just to get it nice and tidy and clean and, uh, there's some caliper bolts over there so I'm going to rebuild these calipers completely I think they're just, they're just really perished and the boots are pretty stuffed and um, it's either that or I buy a whole new set of reconditioned calipers but they're going to, it's like you know seven or eight hundred bucks for a pair so I'm going to try and do it myself with a kit hopefully I'll save a bit of money um, the springs over here they're coming up all right I'm just going to do a little bit more on those and then I've just got some um, some of this stuff from Super Cheap Auto uh, this aerosol rust converter I have no idea if it's any good but it seems to have pretty good reviews so that's that and then just around here there's the entire power steering unit and the steering rack so obviously I can't get, I don't have the right tools to be able to pull any of this stuff off. I'm just going to pop a little rag on the top there. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, I'll probably have to take the whole lot of this to the power steering rebuilding place and get them to rebuild. I'll just to separate everything because I still need the pitman arm. And then I need this arm here, I think this is called an idler arm, I'm not really sure. But anyway. So that, that sort of, with a bit of a wiggle around, but it, it dropped out of the car pretty easily. A lot of power steering fluid coming out, of course. Um, and steering arm, this guy, um, these tie rods, they're all going in the bin. I've got brand new ones that are sitting in the kitchen at the moment, ready to attach to the pitman and the idler over here. So um, i just got to, I need to get that, <laughs> I've got to get that off so that I could kind of reattach everything back to where I need to go. I've got a new one of those as well. Got that guy from here, this guy. I've got one of those, whatever that's called. Alright, don't loop. Okay, so today I've been um, getting all the parts pretty much all cleaned up and giving them a wash. Um, so they've been fully wire brushed and washed. And, uh, and I've just been giving them a coat with the uh, super cheap auto rust converter, aerosol rust converter. So there's some, uh, some parts there. I've just done one of the springs. About to do this one, just waiting for it to dry. It's about ready, I think. And then we'll get the rust converter on there, and then we've got the upper control arms and lower control arms to do, and that's pretty much all the parts. I might do the brakes as well, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it's coming along. All right, here's my beautiful Miss Bonbon. Bon. Just uh, spraying, so we've rust treated. And then we are now just giving these a bit of a spray paint. So it did rain <laughs> while we were while I was drawing one of those days. Uh, so we but we just get cracking on. Let's get this thing done. Looking yeah. good, Bon Bon. Have to get the insides too, baby. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, that's great. All right. Yeah, looking good. You should take them before and after shots. I have. Oh, 
So that's just a satin black, but it's actually coming out really nice. It's all drying off, so it's a bit patchy, but looking like they're ready really to pop patchy. back in the car shortly. Alrighty, so this is a um, the coupling link that lives between the end of the steering column and the power steering box. And the interesting thing about these are that they are actually pop rivet, sort of riveted in, so they're not a serviceable um, sort of part. They, they have to be because I need to use this again, um, unless I buy a new one, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to have to drill this out and then punch that that whole pin straight out of there. I don't think I need these, I've got a new kit, um, but I do need to somehow get this couple of link off. So I might do some drilling and uh, see if I can get that out. Um, I've gone and bit the bullet and I'm also buying a brand new, or reconditioned I should say, um, steering column intermediate shaft, this guy. It's basically just sitting free down there, you can see the end of him. Um, so I've got a new one of those, a reconditioned one coming. So I'll fit that as well. Um, right now I'm just going to take it off and just undo that bolt. Now the thing about these bolts is that uh, I'm not focusing properly, but they need to come all the way out in order for them to come off the shaft. And that was a lesson that I learned down here on the power steering box. You've got to take the bolt all the way out to get the shaft to actually pop because there's a little kind of groove in the, uh, in the power steering box. Anyway, in the power steering box shaft. I'll press on. Okay, so it's pretty easy to pretty easy to get it out. Um, just a nice tight little bolt there. I've got that bolt now, just cleaning up and some solution. But yeah, this is pretty pretty broken. So looking forward to getting a new one. I could mess around. And, I've actually bought a new boot. I could maybe clean this up and put a new boot on it. But it's kind of what's happening in there, inside, in the universal joint that lives in this housing. I'm not sure if I really want to tackle that. And the news is that today I took the entire power steering box and attached to the <laughs> to the rack, um, and then took my new rack down. And uh, the guys down there at uh, Prestige Power Steering down here in Thomas Town will be uh, reconditioning my original box, um, and they'll also be reattaching the Pippin arm to the new steering rack and all the rest of it, so I can literally drop. An idler arm and drag links and whatever else they grew up, don't even know. Total amateur. Um, but anyway, they're going to put it all back together for me so I can just drop the whole lot back in the car and I'll have a new one of these. I'll attach it to my brand new power steering pump and uh, I've got a new coupling and I've got lots of new bushes and it's all start to really start to take shape. And over here, come out here, so it's so amateur, really, the whole show. Um, is I decided to go with gloss. So these have all been glossed up with the first coat, and I'll probably do one more coat. Um, springs, actually now I'm starting to think that the, um, the satin would look better, but this is probably a bit more protective, I suppose. I'm not sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Too late now. It's done. Um, so yeah, looking really good. And then of course, the last thing, so there's crap everywhere. So these calipers. So they've come up pretty nicely, really. There's a little, I did a bit of over spray, so yeah, not a big deal, but um, anyway, they've, they've come up quite nicely. There's the over spray right there, you can see it all the way. Um, but yeah, it's come up right, so these are gonna, these are gonna drop back in, and um, I'm just trying to get some new boots. Some of these, these things guys down here. I went down to Repco today and picked up some new bolts, because I lost one, I haven't been able to locate. There's a caliper brake bolt and I'm gonna I'm gonna make do with these sliders it's so expensive to replace and I know this one's a, this one here's a bit washed out but I'm hoping that it'll do I've cleaned them up so they're looking pretty good I do have the bolts for these but this one this one um, so yeah we're, we're sort of getting really close now to putting everything back together and uh, get this whole shape back on the road so these are some of the parts that I'm using. All right, so we've got some, that's a lower ball joint, these are the upper control arm ball joints. Um, now I've ordered some K or Mackay um, uh, upper control arm and lower control arm bushes as well. 
I mean, why is it Scott Freeman down there at Ultimate Automotive? He just said, look, if they race around Bathurst um, on rubber, and McKay and Kai were the folks that actually supplied it at uh, Holden with the original equipment manufacturing parts. So um, it does look a bit kind of weird, but uh, that's just because of the packaging, it's to protect them, it's to from rusting. Um, and then I'm just replacing, I was going to use these ones because you know everybody says you should, and then a lot of people say you don't. So these are going back up on eBay, and I'll sell the upper and lower control arm bushings, and I've got a new set of lower control arm bushings as well arriving. So, and look, when you think about the car, it is original, so let's put the best original parts that we possibly can back on the car. And, uh, you know, they should do it for another I don't know, 20 years, 10 years. I mean, I hardly drive it, so um, cool. Okay, so this morning I'm trying to get these rivets out of the steering coupling, and because I, I need this this mount that goes into the power steering box. Um, so these actually spin around. I, so I'm having a lot of trouble with a drill trying to drill it broken a couple of bits and it's proving really tricky to get out. I want to be replacing with this guy, which looks very shiny and new. So what I'm thinking now is I do have an angle grinder, I'm just going to take the rivet, just grind it straight off the top, um, sort of underneath, because this, this here where the bolt goes through mounts to the steering box, so it's going to be hard to see if there's any kind of grind marks here, and I'll give this a paint as well. And I also, I was thinking about, I could maybe angle grind through here, um, I guess that's an option. I don't want to damage this little bracket here because just in case I'd sort of need it with the new coupling. So the only way to get these things out is to just grind off the top and then try and punch the whole thing straight out. See how we get on. I'll do one side and update. Okay, so I've just ground that smooth. I'm hoping that might punch. So I'm going to mount this and see if I can use my trusty work zone punch to punch it straight out Not too bad hopefully with a paint it'll come up all right uh, try and smooth it off a little bit more okay so with a gentle grind and just using a punch and a hammer a couple of taps and then just pop straight out um, and what I've done just to, to try and hold this steady is just to use a couple of the old upper control arm bushes kind of the perfect mount to get this in to stay put and that'll whack him. All right, so we'll grind off the other side and uh, we'll clean up this part. Yeah, of course. <laughs> nice. nice. Right, that's beautifully in, I reckon. Seated nicely in there. So that's a rig. So that's just uh, for the, this is for the lower control arm ball joint. Now I've got to try and get it up done. <laughs> Bloody tricky. Hang on. Got a lot of tension. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much tension. <sighs> okay, that's it. Yeah, these take a lot of persuasion. I should have got the breaker bar for this job. Whew. My God, that was hard. All right, hopefully the other side is in good shape. So that's basically just sitting like that. Pressing around there. Let's check the other side. And that looks perfect. So we'll just do a bit of touch-up paint where the, the ring was. And um, that is one beautifully seated ball joint. I think because we'd spray painted inside, it just sort of created that extra bit of friction. But uh, just checking the other side. That looks pretty good. There's a tiny, no, that looks great. Very, very happy. Okay, one down, one to go. Yes. Okay. Right, so I'm just like the first one. I'm just uh, leaving 
this up a little bit of multi-purpose grease just to make sure that hopefully it goes in pretty easily. Just gonna lube up the inside of our receiving hole, for want of a better word. And then it's always a good idea as well to put a bit of lube into these guys, otherwise they get really stiff and they just don't want to turn properly when you're under pressure. So I like to get a bit of lube on those as well. Just helps the whole show. Right, right let's get it set up and um, we will Let's see if we can get this done. So again, what we're gonna do is just pop that there. We're gonna do a ball joint, we're gonna press it in from underneath. Oops, sorry, this way. <laughs> right. I'm gonna try and get it started just a little bit. It's pretty straight. Great, and then we've got our receiver up here. So you want to make sure that's Kind of clearing. First of all, you want to take the bolt off the top. It's not going to work. So you get out of the way. So that goes on there. That's clear of everything. And that goes on top like that. So it's looking good. And then we're going to put this guy on here. So hopefully we press in nice and evenly. Um, and then we mount this, and it's very fiddly, so let's try it. Right, yep, that's good, just hold it there, so we can kind of start to get everything nicely lined up. So we make sure that this receiver is not hitting the actual ball joint, the top of the ball joint as it goes in. And that's nice and plumb. Okay, so this is the rig. So I've managed to press that in now. Um, to use a sort of a breaker bar slash torque wrench to do it because it is really really tight so i've got the receiving tube there uh, and then just a little kind of bracket thing in there that fits in i'll just give that a good tight and uh use a bit of muscle and it'll slide in all right so we're just pressing in the upper control arm bush we just need to get one in first so let's we're just doing so that's my rig with a 32 mil so if you zoom in on that, you can see that pressing in in a very satisfying way. So you can probably do, speed this up with a ratchet, but uh, it's going in nicely. That is just about... Listen this off and we're done. Hopefully, we'll check the other side now and just make sure that it's okay. Looks like it's pressed on beautifully. It's looking really good. Great. So, just hold there for a second. And then, what we're going to do now. Slide that through there and that through there. So push that in, that's it. And now we're going to press on this other one, like that. And I'm probably just going to give this a bit of a whack. I'm going to just give it a tap. Before I do that though, don't get too excited. Grab a little bit of grease. Get everything nicely greased up. Including inside. A little bit more just in the inside of this shaft here. That's it. Yes. Okay, and I'll just give, see if we can drift this in without breaking my tool. It's a nice tight fit. Alrighty, so these are all the parts that are all being prepared and starting to get rebuilt. So the upper control arms are actually done now. So I've got those bushes nicely in there against the arms. So the original Mackay rubbers. Down here we've also got our little pelvic control arm ball joints. It's all looking nicely screwed in and nicely put in. I didn't really show how I put those in, but basically you go one end at a time. And then you do one end, you put the rod through, and then you just drift in the other end. I actually just used a cob chisel just to tap it through. Um, didn't take too long. You see a little bit of markings there. Um, all right, so all the springs are ready. The lower control arms are uh, not 
not ready. I'm just waiting on the bushes to arrive. Uh, the car bushes, just to put it back. So once they're done, then we're actually ready to start putting this whole show back together. And that's about it for now. Alrighty, so now I'm just um, just doing a little bit of wire brushing on here, just to tidy this up a little bit. I'm going to try and put some carefully put on some rust converter onto some of these parts where I've kind of scrubbed it back and cleaned it up a little bit. A little bit more work to do, but what's really scary is you can't really see, but in the cross member it is absolutely choppers full of stuff, like just dirt and weeds and stuff. So I'm going to try and flush that today and get all that out of there. Some really big pieces of dirt. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get it all out, but while the control arm's out, it's a good time to get in there and see if you can flush it a little bit. Alrighty, just a really fast update here. So these um, sway bar mounts, are just, they're actually too wide for the bracket. The, the bracket won't fit, so I've had to order some new sway bar mounts. I think this sway bar on the Monaro is a 24mm. Um, and that seems to fit all right, the, the mount there, but um, yeah, the, the actual uh, bracket, it just will not fit. It sort of goes one side or the other, so that's been hopeless. So they're going to get chucked, chucked away, I suppose, and the new set's going to come in. Um, and then while I was doing that, well, I was doing something else. So with my new calipers, I just put them, not new, <laughs> put them back together. So basically that's how they slide in. So. You put your pins in and your boots on. Um, the boots were just too expensive and these ones weren't too bad, they're not perfect. Tiny little hole sort of there, but not enough for me to worry about to be honest. So um, I just tighten those up straight into the pins. So these actually slide really, really nicely backwards and forwards um, when you're on the right angle. I'll just tap that off, whoops. But they just slide in and out you know, as you on the pins really nicely. Um, and then the same for this one. So I just have to reattach that boot on the other side. Um, this one's actually a little bit stiffer, and maybe it's because actually, I'm not really sure why that's because, but it does move, but it's a lot um, more difficult to move. Um, so both sides, both pins have got lots and lots of grease on them. So I'm not quite sure why one is more slighter than the other. Maybe I've put the wrong boot, sorry, pin in the wrong side or something. I thought I'd had them both the same way, but perhaps not. But anyway, so they're looking really good. And um, yeah, I'll just go fix up uh, that, that little boot there in a second. And we'll get these guys back in the car, hopefully in the next couple of days. Um, but yeah, it's just coming up beautifully at the moment. I'm really excited. Just can't wait to get hold of the, the final little part here and then the new steering column as well. It's a minute sharp. So once we get all that, here are the pads. So um, there are there plenty of meat still left on those guys, so we can we can throw those back in the car, alright? I'll give those a bit of a clean. Um, and uh, yeah, it's looking good. Alright, so the fun kind of starts now. We're going to be able to put the, hopefully, get the upper control arms in today. And I'm also going to plan to put in or reassemble the spindles with the new discs and do the bearings. I've just got to pop this nice fancy looking bump stop up here. And some installation grease that came with a kit from Super Pro or somebody. So we'll get that in and uh, hopefully it won't, won't be a drama. So that was pretty straightforward. Just uh, slide it on the two bolts there, put the bump stop in and uh, pop the shims back in and um, we'll bolt this thing up and see if we can tighten up those nuts up there. They're a bit threaded to be honest so I haven't been able to find any new upper control arm bush nuts or whatever they're called so I can make do with what I've got. I also gave those a little bit of a spray too with some caliper paint and um, they come up looking pretty good. I probably should have done the bolt too but anyway that's alright. Yeah, so big thanks to Barzi for tipping me off about the uh, left hand side left and left side right. So let's see this right one. I'm basically going to pop that. I don't know if you can see down there, but just in that one because that's the right hand side facing. And I'll do the same obviously for the left. 
Okay, so this is the right hand side upper control arm. That's all in and all talked up and looking good. And uh, the bump stops in there. And anyway, when we get the bushes for the lower control arms, we'll do those. Um, just on top, I just gave the bracket there for the brakes um, a little spray. So everything's just popped in. So a little bit of wrestling, but she's all in and uh, looking good. And that's that side. And then on this side, this is the left hand side, passenger side. Um, up the control arm as well, and that's all talked up and very, very happy, nice and stiff, which is what you want, rather than mine, which were flopping around all over the place, the original ones. So, um, yeah, it's a good upgrade. All right, uh, that's it. All right, so I've also got uh, these amazing um, kits from Resto Country to rebuild the front end with all the bearings and the spindles. So that, they are my new um, discs over there, sorry, yes. And then uh, they come, and then you can order these off eBay um, from Resto Country Spare. So a big shout out to them because they've got uh, these fantastic kits that come with oil, or the grease, I'm sorry, caps and the nuts and the pins and the washers and the two bearings that go on each side, plus uh, the rubber boot that sits around the base of the spindle there. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to putting these together. So uh, let's see how we get on with that. Okay, so I'm just installing the lower control arms today. Uh, it's a brand new day. Um, so the bolts go in outside in. It's a bit of a wrestle to get everything lined up so the bolts will go through. So I had to give them a bit of a whack to, and line them up and use a you know, screwdriver to try and Get the holes perfectly aligned so everything will fit a little bit of, little bit of lube sprayed up in there um, the other side though is proving to be a huge challenge as usual <laughs> with this project I cannot get that lower control arm in so uh, I'm sneaking up on that in the next couple of days I'll just do this side first it's a bit easier so far okay so those bolts are all tightened up so they're set to I've rated between 60 and 70 foot pounds they're a three quarter um, so Newton meters, which is what I have on my torque wrench, uh, it's about 95, they're about somewhere around there. So that um, is now in, let's see if we can get the spring in. Alrighty, so we're on the, the run home at the moment. We've got uh, all this all put back together, pretty much ready to bolt back into the car. Um, just got to double check, the mechanic, or the guys at Prestige Power Steering said that they would adjust the arms to match the same length as the ones that were on the car. Quite sure if that's happened, so I'll have to do that. Uh, got the new reconditioned power steering box, got some steering arms there. Uh, that's the reconditioned um, steer intermediate shaft for the steering, which is really cool. Uh, you can see a shocker over there, so I've just got some. They're well rated, but they're quite cheap, so they're from Ultima and off eBay. Um, and then I'm ready to put the calipers back on. I'll probably do that after the cars, oh, sorry, the, the um, rotors are back on the car. Uh, we've got our sway bar and uh, we've got our brackets over there. So everything, now the only thing we're waiting for is the, uh, like a spring compressor, just to get the springs up and on, you know, sort of so that I can uh, get the ball joints reattached to the, um, you know, to the stub axle. And um, so I'm just sort of waiting on that to arrive. It should arrive any day now. And then uh, this weekend, I'm hoping to knock this sucker out of the park and get it all finished. Uh, we'll see how we get on. Okay, so it's been about a week later, and um, just a quick update here. What I'm doing today is I'm just going to put the steering back in. I've got my brother coming over to help in a few hours, so I just need to get everything ready to go. So the steering box is all sorted out. Um, the rack has had all of these bits put back on it. A brand new one that I bought off eBay. And then what I'm doing this morning is I'm basically going to count how many thread, threads there are between that nut and the end on both sides to try and roughly get these, I haven't started yet, but roughly get these guys um, the same length. So a little bit less, you know, hopefully dry all right. So I'm just giving those a bit of a wire brush just to clean them up. So we'll get everything kind of about the same length and hopefully this thing will drive okay when, uh, when it gets back in the car. At least I'll be able to get it along for a wheel alignment. Okay, so this is the internal spring compressor set kit. Uh, and that's it at work at the moment, sitting in there. So I'm just winding up, winding it up with that. 
Um, it's getting very, very tight now. There's a lot of tension in there. But um, we haven't got too far to go. I'll probably have to loosen off the control arm bolts up there. It's a little bit too tight at the moment. I want a little bit of play in this bottom control arm. Probably tighten those up too early, torque them up. So I'll loosen those off and then I'll just keep lifting up the spring until it looks as though it's going to pop into its seat. So we will see how we, how we go there. All right, a bit like Barnsley, I've had to put a ratchet strap in to sort of pull it back. It's actually under quite a lot of tension. The whole thing's under a heap of tension. The, uh, the trolley's underneath the lower control arm there. I've loosened off those nuts up there, the three quarters. So we'll just pump this a little higher and hopefully I can just sort of tap it in and seat it. Um, and then we can attach the hole, tap it in and seat it down there. Hopefully that's gonna sit sort of lined up. I'm trying to get a little groove in the seat there where this edge of the spring should slot into this little groove. You can feel it where, near where the, the drain hole is there, back there. So um, hopefully this is all lining up okay. I am so calling this a win. So I don't think it's perfectly in there, the bottom of that spring, but I'm just, that, this, the control arm's actually now under tension, so using that ratchet, I've been able to pull the spring back a little bit, line it right up with that mounting area in there, and it's seating beautifully, so we can probably compress this a bit more, by so pumping up the jack a bit higher, and then we can start to look at that. And that is something here. So yeah, this is going really well. So definitely buy yourself a spring compressor. They're well worth the money. It takes a lot of the stress and tension out of the whole situation. Okay, we're getting close here. So what I'm doing now is I'm checking out the lower control arm, compressing the spring. Still got the spring compressor in there and still got the ratchet strap around the other side there, just pulling on it. Um, this now is... <laughs> I've dealt with one hand. It's definitely a one-man job when you're not filming, but uh, that, that there goes up and I'm pretty damn close to locking that in. So um, this is getting really good. I'm just going to lift up that upper control arm and then just drop that in and then jack it up a bit more and pop a nut on it, which is just waiting down there on both ends, on the bottom and the top. I've just got that in and I'm just jacking it up now to try and get enough on it so I can get a nut. Basically get it all the way up, I think. Hopefully nothing breaks. I'm just gonna try and line that up a little bit better. That's better. So let's go. There you go. That's it. And a lot of pressure. Sorry, uh, I'll come back once I've got the nut on. I don't think I can see it underneath yet, can I? Oh, I can. Ooh, that's good. All right, so that's been jacked up. The screws are the bolts, nuts, nuts have been tightened up. Just spec. My torque wrench broke though, which is a bit annoying, so I have to send that back. It's only brand new. Um, but the spring's in there. I've still got this thing on a jack. So what I'm gonna do now is put the shocker in. So that'll hold it. And I'm just going to tighten up those three quarters at the back there. They were kind of loosened off to get this whole shirt back together. And um, but yeah, it's really starting to take shape now. So that's one side done, and uh, just still waiting on my brother to help out with the steering next. <laughs> that's my brother helping me at the moment. So at the moment, uh, we've got the drag linky, whatever this is called. And yeah, this is all the steering. So we just attach the tie rods there to the steering arm. Just move, moving the tie rods around a little bit just to line them up with the, the arm. That's all looking really nice in there. All our long steering arm, power steering box has been attached. I need my brother to lift it because I'm too weak. Um, that's, uh, that's all been tightened up. And we've got the final tie rod in and the other side rebuilt this afternoon. So this one day's job. It is. I think it's probably close to a two-man job. I might have been able to get the steering box in with a jack, but it's a bit tricky with trying to get the bolts in from the other side. So we're just talking everything up at the moment. I managed to fix my torque wrench, and um, hopefully everything is looking good. Shocks are in, springs are in, 
everything is looking amazing. Okay, so that's the new power steering box down there. I haven't actually hooked it up to any you know, hoses or anything. We'll do that next. Um, so then I've got this project next, which is the intermediate shaft. So that's all kind of a little bit greased up there. I'm just about to try and put it onto the steering column down. I don't know if I can focus in on that, but uh, it doesn't want to do it. Sorry. No. <laughs> okay. It's down there. You can see it down there. So that spline this is going to be interesting. It has to line up with the spline in there plus the where the bolt goes through. So same thing down here. That's got to go over the right orientation onto that shaft there, so this could be really interesting. I'm not quite sure if this is actually going to work out okay. I've never done this before. There's certainly no videos about it. Yeah, so I'm just trying to get... The problem is, is that the, the whole shaft is moving as I push. There's a lot of play in that shaft. I'm not quite sure. I'm kind of pushing the shaft rather than getting a... It's a bit of a shove. <laughs> and a wiggle, and a bit of lube. There she goes. I think what you do is just, oh no. <laughs> All right, so I'm not sure how to stop the shaft disappearing back up into the car. I'm gonna try and pull that out somehow and hold it in there so I can, hmm. There's got to be a trick to this. <laughs> I've got to try and figure it out. Okay, so here's the deal. This, this guy. Well, I can't do it now. I don't know if you can do it, Mike. But that basically moves in and out. And uh, we can't do it. <laughs> and um, But it does move in and out. And uh, we've moved it in too far. We couldn't. So that's it. Yeah, see that? So while we were trying to put the steering intermediate shaft on, we just pushed it all the way in, we couldn't get it on. So what we've done is just attach the intermediate shaft just to the very end and nipped it up to grip the spline, that's it, so that we can pull it back out and then we're gonna try and reattach without pushing it back in. But there is this access plate up there, so we might be able to get some multi-grips onto that because you can see the shaft moving in and out, so that's definitely the shaft. So maybe that holds it steady while you're putting the intermediate shaft on. Fun. I'm going to have to take that out, but uh, right now I'm just opening up the, the mouth as wide as I can so that it goes on nice and easy. <clears throat> That's better. Okay, so hopefully that will come off. So the way this works is, you can see the bolt there, that, that goes through the the groove in the in the shaft to, to make sure this never comes off. So it's actually a very, very clever setup. As long as the bolt stays on. As long as the bolt stays on. <laughs> All right, take two. This is better. Okay. Give it a good old loop. Hey, <laughs> yes, buddy. Can you head over in a All right. Can we head over in a yeah, buddy. Hmm. Yep, I yeah, it's just not quite there. Well, maybe I could a little tap or something might. Do it without pushing it in. Well, we know we can pull it out again. But that's true. Right. We've got the system. So, I'm going to just try and give it a little tap. Mark. It just needs to go another two or three more. All right, so we've done a couple of things. We've had to start over. Try to line up the steering wheel in there nice and straight and we've lined up the wheels nice and straight got that guy in it's a bit of a wrestle now we've had to 
decoupled down there, the rag joint. I'll try and focus in on that. That's it. Down there. Um, so we've decoupled the rag joint and then put this sleeve back on. And then we're about to recouple the rag joint to the intermediate shaft with these little bolts. So we'll get that done and then hopefully. Okay, so this is almost job done. Um, all the suspension and all the steering has been put in yesterday. It's been greasing up the tie rod ends and ball joints and all that stuff. Just been methodical about that. Um, and it's looking really good. Uh, I'll take you around the other side. So it's all connected and looking really nice in there. Obviously the disc is a little bit rusty at the moment. Fair enough. Um, brakes are been bled and just had to reset the, uh, the brake light this this sensor here so basically what you've got to do is just take it out had to use a, um, a 5 8 socket um, sort of like a spark plug socket to get it off it's really tight with a spanner so it's kind of you need the right tools to get that off um, then I raced down a super cheap water and bought myself a some proper hose, Mackie hose, for the return line for the power steering unit because that uh, went missing. I think when I sent it down to get reconditioned, um, yeah, I never got it back. Um, and then, yeah, this morning I started the car and uh, basically just topped up the power steering fluid there and then just turned it on full lock. Um, so on the very first one, it basically almost drained out completely. So I think do a, do a turn and then top it up because there won't be much left in it and it'll go straight through the pump and um, oh, sorry the box and then uh, just a little bit of top ups there's a lot of air in it so at the moment I'm just letting it settle I'll probably start it again and, and do a little bit more lock to lock just to try and get all the little air pockets and bubbles out but brakes are feeling good steering everything's turning which is awesome so uh, I'm just waiting on a sway bar link um, for this side here so uh, it didn't come with the kit, it was missing, and I'm waiting for them to send me a new one. So we'll pop that into the upper control, lower control arm there, and uh, mount them up underneath. Got some issues with the mounts. So the ones that I bought, I'm not sure if they fit or not, so I'm just gonna, I can't, a bit of rare spares have been everywhere trying to get the, what I think is the right sort of bushing to go on the sway bar fit inside the bracket but I uh, haven't been able to do that so I'm just going to go with what I've got and uh, maybe later on I'll, I'll try and fix it. Anyway for now um, it is job done. Alrighty so I'm just waiting on some parts to finish off the suspension so I thought look while I'm here I'll take off the water pump so I managed to get that off off the fan in there. Probably should take it all out and give it a bit of a clean but uh, anyway so that's the timing chain cover there that's looking pretty grubby so I'm going to tidy that up um, and uh, just my big job today is to obviously replace that and these fan blades are no good you want to get one with the like a circle sort of I don't know what you call that a turbine um, so that's from GMB that's off eBay it's probably about 60 bucks it's pretty nice um, new thermostat housing obviously but what you can see up here is there's a lot of corrosion in here and there was a lot of leakage of fluid coolant that was going and just pulling in there all the time and it was obviously leaking down here as well where the hose is attached to the um, to the water pump so to try and solve some of these problems it took me a long time but I was able to source this guy which is um it kind of matches the number on there and um, it's in pretty good condition it's not perfect but it's certainly looking a lot better than the one that's in there at the moment so the job is basically two two jobs get that in over this weekend and uh, reattach everything um, the dizzy's got to come back out and everything's got to come off that probably kill the spacer I'm hoping that this new manifold means that I don't need it basically the reason why the spacer is there was because the carby was kind of boiling just getting too hot when I was at idle on a hot day and then the car was just cutting out all the time so that solved that problem but I'm hoping to get rid of it because it's not original and um, yeah, so that's sort of the, the project for this weekend. Okay, so that's that came out quite easily. Um, obviously, 
It's literally just come out of the car. Really nice and clean underneath there. Um, it's in really good shape actually. So compared to the so-called new one, which looks not as good shape. But anyway, um, I'm still going to press on because you can see there just how wiped out that is around where the thermostat sits. Um, when you compare it to this one, which isn't perfect, but it's better. Um, so I've also put all the bolts that came, all the inlet manifold bolts, in exactly the same because they're all a little bit different lengths. So when I've, I've got a whole set of new bolts, but I just want to make sure I'm putting the right length bolt in where they're supposed to go. Um, back inside the car, so that's the valley there, and you can see the, the cam sitting down in there. Some of the lifters, they're just hydraulic lifters in there. Push rods um, out the back. I didn't have to take the dizzy out, so not yet anyway. <laughs> so, um, Everything. I'm just going to clean everything up. We've got to try and stop as much dirt and shit falling in there as possible. And um, anyway, hopefully we'll get this thing um, all put back together in the next few hours. Cool. All right. So um, what I've done is just basically plugged up anywhere where the some you know debris can get into the engine as best I can. So you can see that there's you still get some that collects there. I haven't done this side yet, but. This side took about an hour just to get all the old um, gasket off and then just give it a wire brush, just a little couple of little bits I want to just tidy up a tiny bit more and get them so that both sides mate properly. And um, yeah, so we'll tackle this side next. So I've just put the bolts back in the hole so the holes don't fill up with rubbish. And uh, we'll get the scraper out and uh, get some microfiber cloths in this well and in the valley and we'll try and get it nice and tidy and clean so I can get the gaskets on and uh, get this, get it put back together. Alrighty, just a quick update. So, um, sorry, I had to work fast. <laughs> Silicon was drying. So, uh, put the gaskets on after cleaning everything up, and um, silicon on both sides of the gaskets, and some new bolts have gone in. The longer bolts go in the middle, one, two, three, one, two, three, see it there, and the shorter ones all at the end. And then I'm just going to get the torque wrench out and torque this sucker up, and then when I get time tomorrow, I'll try and wire everything back up and put the water pump back in. Okay, uh, this is the next day. So I've just been kind of spraying a few parts and um, I've put in the water pump down there. It's looking pretty good. All the hoses are back on. Um, well, most of them. But yeah, pretty much all are. What I'm waiting for is actually a TBR valve, apparently, which is a sort of sits in there. That's actually a temperature gauge in there. And then there's a TBR here, which goes in that one. I kind of need that. Um, broke the other one. In fact, I couldn't get it out of the uh, out of the other out of the other manifold. So I'm um, sorry, I'm losing concentration here. I'm tired. Um, anyway, the carby's on obviously, and all the bits are on. So um, I've just been replacing the gaskets, the rocker cover gasket. Um, I've done one side, which is that side over there. I'm just got to finish off that side and do that in the next day or two. Uh, I'm going to pack it up for tonight. And um, yeah, but it's looking really nice, isn't it? Not perfect, but it'll do.